Hi, I'm Alicia and welcome to my channel Papercraft Secrets. Today I'm sharing a bulk set of shabby chic cards that I created with matching gift boxes using the Florabella Papers by Mente. This is a kit available on my website at www.papercraftsecrets.com.au it's a physical kit, so it includes all of the papers, all of the ribbon, all of the flowers, everything that you need to create these beautiful cards. And then this class, this video, will take you through exactly how to create all of the cards and all of the little envelopes slash gift boxes. This kit could be perfect for you if you enjoy creating from a kit. If you need a little bit of help with the creation of your cards, if you want some help to show you exactly how you can put papers together to create cards, maybe you just don't want to have to think about the design of the cards and you just want to follow along and enjoy the creating. Maybe you don't want to have to shop for all of the supplies separately and you just want them to arrive in a beautiful package at your doorstep ready for crafting. I'm so excited you're here to join me. Let's get started. Our first step is to take one of your pieces of 12 by 12 inch cardstock and measure at 12 inches and cut. This removes the barcode at the bottom of the page. You need to cut this at four inches. So measure along four inches and do your cut. Measure along another four inches and do your cut. And then you have three pieces of cardstock. And this is what we'll be making our cards out of. Take your next 12 by 12 sheet. And we're going to repeat that process. So remove the barcode label. So measure 12 inches and cut. Then we're going to measure four inches and cut. And measure four inches and cut. There's our second three card bases and now our third piece of 12 by 12 cardstock measure at 12 inches and cut measure at four inches cut and four inches and cut this will give you nine card bases for our set of nine cards. We're going to pop our paper trimmer away for a moment and we're going to fold our base cards in half. So that's simply folding them over, matching the edges and then scoring down that side of the card. And if you want to, you can use a boning folder to just give a nice crease. So there we go, folding that over and smoothing that crease down. And we need to do that for every one of those cards. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So that is our nine base cards all ready to go. We're going to pop those to the side now. We're going to get out our papers. This is your Mente Florabella paper kit, paper set that comes in your kit. The papers are beautiful. 
such a gorgeous, gorgeous paper range. One of my favorites. I just keep coming back to this collection over and over again because I just love it and it's so easy to work with. What we're doing is we're choosing a couple of pages here that we're going to use on the base of our cards. I've decided to go with these papers here. I'm using the soft sides on the back rather than the busier, more patterned sides on the front. So I've got two pages of number two and two pages of number three. And I'm going to be trimming these down to five and three quarters by three and three quarters. So you can see I've got two sort of pinky pages and two white pages. This is the number three paper. It's the white sort of gray paper. And again, I'm going to be cutting this to five and three quarters by three and three quarters. This paper will be for the inside of our cards. This will be where you write your message on. So we're taking our paper trimmer again and this time we are cutting at five and three quarter inches and then we cut again at five and three quarter inches. Then we turn our page to the side and we're going to cut it three and three quarter inches, three and three quarter inches, three and three quarter inches. We're going to repeat that process with this one, cutting at three and three quarters, three and three quarters, and three and three quarters. Taking our next sheet, cutting at five and three quarters. We'll only need one strip, three and three quarters, three and three quarters, and three and three quarters. That should give us nine pieces. Yep, there's our nine, pop them to the side. We are now moving on to our soft pink page, which is the number two page, cutting it at five and three quarters. And again, at five and three quarters. Then we're cutting it at three and three quarters, three and three quarters, and three and three quarters. And we just continue this process, just like we cut out our silvery white pages. We'll need two pages to create nine of these card base pieces. Here's our last three here. Three quarters. And that's all done. Okay, so that's nine in the pink and nine in the white. Our next step is gluing. We are going to glue all of our pink pages onto the front of our card bases and we will have a white border around the edge of our card. So we're going to go through now and glue all of our pink pieces to the front of every one of our cards. And that is our nine cards. They all have the pink on the front now. Our next job is to glue the white rectangles onto the inside of each card.
and that is all of our white pieces glued on to the inside of our cards and we've got our pink pieces on the front covers so a beautiful job there everything is finished there on the base of those cards our next step is to take the number five paper we will be cutting our number five paper to five and a half by two inches so let's measure and cut five and a half inches and another five and a half inches we will only need one of these papers Okay, we've got our two rectangles now we're going to cut at two inches cutting at two inches all the way along that first piece and then two inches all the way along that second piece to give you nine pieces now we're going to spread those out now this is actually the back of the paper I've chosen the other side of course when you create your cards you can choose any side of the paper that you want you you might like your cards to look a bit different to the way I've made mine you want might want a little bit more color and a bit more pattern in yours I'm going for quite a subtle look I'm using some recycled cardboard on the back of these strips to elevate this strip on my card you could use foam mounting tape if you preferred once you have enough of that recycled cardboard on the back of those strips i'm just going to add some glue so that we've got glue on each one and then I'm going to position them onto my card now I'm positioning them on the right hand side of the card I'm just going to pop them on each of the nine cards All right, we're moving on to the next step now you will need the two number six papers from your paper collection one side we will cut out all of these pictures fussy cut it on the other side on the other page we'll cut out all of the frames so this is going to take a little bit of time you can do this in front of the TV or you know at it away from your craft desk and you will need every single one of those cut out to decorate your cards once you have those cut out you can place them onto your card and decide where they might like where you might like them to go so one frame and one picture per card our next step is to take the lace that is in your kit it's a very delicate soft lace and we're going to cut it so that it fits on our card next to our rectangular strip so just lie it down next to the strip and then trim it off to the size that you need and then we're going to glue that little piece of lace onto each of our cards so I just did a line of glue going down the side there and then I just moved my piece of lace onto the glue and I just tuck it under that paper just a little bit so it looks like the lace is just popping out from underneath that piece of paper there 
And now we're going to go forward and do that to each one of our nine cards. So we have some sentiments in our kit. I'm going to pop them out on the table now so that I can see what I've got. In your kit, you'll have some thank yous, some for yous, some happy birthdays, and a love sentiment. So a little bit of a mixture of sentiments so that you can create a mixture of cards with this card pack. So I'm going to choose which cards to put my sentiments on. Now this one's got a, the horse. I'm going to add a happy birthday to that one. On this card I have the easel and the frame and I'm thinking about where I'm going to position it and I'm thinking maybe the love sentiment might be nice because that easel kind of reminds me of a wedding so this could be a wedding card on this one I have the horse and the white frame I'm thinking maybe that could be a happy birthday I know a lot of girls like horses and unicorns so that could be a happy birthday card this one's got the cow girl boots and the hat and the suitcase. Let's add a thank you sentiment to that one. This one has the rectangular frame and the floral cluster with the heart-shaped locket. Let's add a thank you sentiment to that one. Again, you can choose whatever sentiment to match whatever image that's going to suit you. This is just an example. This has got the oval frame and the floral cluster. I think we might put a for you in there because that could be a very generic card. This one has the rectangular frame and the lantern. Going to give that one a happy birthday. This one has the oval frame and the letter. That can be a happy birthday. This one has a rectangular frame and the clock and that can have the for you. So I've just gone through and chosen the sentiments that I think suit the images. You'll go through and make your own decisions on what you like the best. In the kit we have some beautiful Prima flowers. I'm very excited because this is the first kit that I've had with the Prima flowers. So this is very exciting for me and they're a lovely soft grey, a soft buttercup yellow and a soft baby pink so they go really nicely with this collection. They're not overly bulky, they're quite, they're not too small, they're not too big, they're just a nice size for a, a set of cards and I think the colours really match nicely with the Florabella collection so stay tuned for more Prima flowers coming into my kits I'm really really pumped about this I do love Prima flowers there we go so that's why we're making nine cards because there's nine flowers in this little packet we're also going to be using cheesecloth which is in your kit cheesecloth adds a lovely softness to a shabby chic card and because these cards have that shabby chic feel it's nice to just add a little layer of cheesecloth to soften the paper layers so you need to cut from your kit a little rectangle for each card from cheesecloth I say cheesecloth but it's actually butter muslin if you want to go to this to spotlight to buy it yourself you've got to ask for butter muslin and it's in a little packet with purple it's in a plastic purple packet it's quite difficult to find but it's really really soft and lovely 
I'm going to add some more recycled cardboard to my cards. Now if you prefer to use double sided tape or foam mounting squares or dots that's completely up to you. I use recycled cardboard because it's cheaper, saves me a lot of money and it's also a way of helping the environment. This piece of cardboard was actually a Nike shoebox and one shoebox has I have used this shoebox on so many projects so it's one way that I can help the environment and it saves me money from having to buy foam dots or foam squares and it also then I just pair that with the glue and I find that's more economical but it's of course completely up to you if you prefer to use the foam dots or the foam squares or the foam mounting tape that's up to you. You might not like to mount your cards at all. You might prefer to have a very flat card. I should probably mention that we're going to be making little boxes for these cards. They're not really cards that will fit overly well into an envelope. The Prima flowers, although they're only fairly small, they're just a little, probably a little bit too bulky to just go in an envelope. You could, you could make it fit, but your envelope's going to be a little bit squishy. So I thought it might be nice to make a little gift box to go with these cards. So because I'm making a gift box, I'm, I'm allowing myself to use some cardboard in between my layers, which will make my cards a little bit bulkier, but it will also give them a lot more wow factor. So what I'm doing here is spreading out the cheesecloth. You do not want to just stick your cheesecloth on without playing with it and basically pulling it apart because it doesn't give the same wispy feeling. I put some, I've been putting some cardboard on the back of the, I've just popped it where the frame would go. So we've already put cardboard underneath that rectangular strip. If I just put my frame straight on the paper, it's going to look lopsided, so I've got to balance it out. So I'm balancing it out with a little bit more recycled cardboard. Then I'm pulling my cheesecloth so it's all wispy. Now, if you've got a little edge, I had a bit of edging on this part. Depends what part of the material you get. Cut your edge off because the edge doesn't pull nicely. You've still got this sort of chunky edge. You want it to look a little bit like, it's sort of a bit like that spider web stuff that they have at Halloween that they pull out. You want it to look wispy. Um, you don't want it to look like just a square of material that you've just chucked straight on. Okay, so that's that card done. I'm just going to go through every single card now. I'm going to glue down the, the frame and then I'm going to play with the cheesecloth and, and spread it out a little bit. So here's my horse card. I'm gluing down the frame. And then I'm going to pull my cheesecloth out. I'm going to cut that little edge off. I don't want that edge on there. Pull that out with your fingers and then lay that on top. We'll come back and we'll glue everything down a bit later. We're working in stages. Now as you are doing this, you want to think about the positioning of your frame. You may not want your frame directly in the middle and this is going to depend on what picture you're working with. The cowboy boots and the hat I put slightly to the left hand side so that the edge of that little material coming from the hat ties up with the edge of the card. So you want to have a little think about the positioning of the frame as to the picture. You don't have to have that frame smack bang in the middle of the card. You can on some cards but on others it might suit more if you have it higher and to the left or lower and to the right. 
So as you're sort of positioning your frame, just keep in mind where you're going to put your picture. And because we're using the liquid glue, we can move the frame around after. All right, so let's move on. We've got all those frames down now. In your kit, you've got some white twine. Cut it to about 15 inches, and that will give you enough to make a bow. We will need one bow for every card, so you'll need nine bows. So you want to go through and just make all of your bows. In your kit, you've also got this beautiful ribbon, which is my absolute favorite ribbon. I love this ribbon. It's in a beautiful soft gray silver color, which goes perfectly with these papers. What I need you to do with the ribbon is to tie it into nine different bows. They don't need to be big bows. They're actually only fairly small because we don't want too much chunkiness at the, on the card. They're not overly chunky cards. I've kept mine fairly small. We're going to begin gluing everything down now and assembling our card. We've got all of our bits and pieces, so now it's time to put it all together. So take your liquid glue, put some glue on the back of your image and position it onto your frame. Take some glue and put that on the back of your sentiment. Think about where you want to position it on each image. Each image is going to be different. Okay, just gluing this one down onto the frame. This is the one that I've got more on the left hand side of the card. And for my image, I think I'm going to glue it there on the hat. Maybe I might move it up a little bit. I'm going to have my bow down underneath. So when you're positioning your sentiment, think about where you're going to put your bow and where you're going to put your ribbon, your um, flower. Bit of glue on the back of here. Positioning this one in the middle. I'm going to put the sentiment over the top of the love heart. Glue on the back of the envelope. I'm going to put the sentiment, I think, on the love heart as well there. Glue on the back of the horse. The sentiment is going to go under the horse's mouth. Glue on the back of the easel. I'm going to put that love sentiment right in the middle of the easel. Glue on the back of the flowers and I'm going to put that sentiment in fairly well in the middle of those flowers. The horse and the sentiment on the horse there. And this lantern one, gluing that down. So the cheesecloth doesn't really need the glue because it'll glue with the image. Okay, now we're going to do the bows and the flowers. Now for the sentiments that have that little hole in the banner, I want to cover that up with my flower or my bow. I don't really want to see that hole. So I'm positioning my bow and my ribbon and my flower sort of on that hole there, on a sort of diagonal. There we go. So I think I like the twine first and then the ribbon on top, but you can play around with whichever suits you the best. Twine, ribbon, flower.
that one I did ribbon twine flower so you can see how that looks a little bit different you see more of the twine so you might prefer one way or the other Rib, uh, twine ribbon flower now even though the love sentiment isn't the same it's not a banner I still sort of position the ribbon and the bow in the same place on the card I really love the clustering of the embellishments on these cards it's a very simple cluster but it's just really soft and pretty and just enough to decorate the card without being too much then you need to go through and trim off all the little ends of your twine and your ribbons so that there's nothing hanging down too long give everything a little bit of a haircut isn't that pretty like aren't the colors gorgeous look at this one this is so pretty and this one so beautiful beautiful cards All right, so that's our cards finished. You've still got some papers left over from your kit. I thought it would be nice to make some envelopes, well, some little boxes for our cards. So you're going to need a 12 by nine inch piece of paper. You can choose any of the pages that you've got left in your kit or you can choose a piece of 12 inch paper from your stash. We will be doing some scoring to create our envelope. We will be scoring at four and a half, five and a half, 10 and 11 on the 12 inch side, go. Four and a half, score down, five and a half, 10 and 11 score down turn it to the 9 inch side on the 9 inch side we'll be scoring at 1 and 8 inches so we're going to score at 1 inch and 8 inches okay All right, so what we're going to do here is it's hard to see, I know, but we're cutting in to the score line. It's very hard to see, but there's like a little, it's going to be the part where the envelope folds. It's going to be a little tab. So we need to cut that. We're also going to be cutting at the top as well. I'll, I'll show you a bit clearer in the next in the next box hopefully because this paper is really quite difficult to see what I'll do is I'll do a little printout um, that can come with the kit and it'll show you clearly where you need to cut that might be the best way I think so what we're doing is we're making a, a box for our card all right so we need to fold you can see where I've cut the little tab there and I've cut that little tab there and then I've cut the bits at the top so this is going to be our little box just fold those bits over every score line is folded so then we we are going to make our box by adding a little bit of glue to the tab there and there and then that folds up like that ok 
okay and then we fold the sides in so it's sort of like an envelope but it's big enough to hold a bulky card so it's, it's half box half envelope it's just a nice little gift box um, to put a card in that's a bit little bit too chunky for an envelope and, and it also makes the gift extra special to get a card in a box like this is it just makes that card even nicer and then that lid just folds down in there like that see isn't that pretty that's just beautiful the papers are amazing let's get a little card and just pop it in and see I'll show you how it fits in so it just fits in like that and then you just fold that little bit down and then you've got that now what we do with the scrap is we make a little belly band for the box so don't throw your scrap away so we'll have to score this at one and three quarters two and three quarters seven and a quarter and eight and a quarter but first we've just got to trim that barcode off we don't want that barcode on our belly band so let's just trim that off first Then we get our scoring board and we put it on the 12 inch side. Okay, we're going to score at one and three quarters, two and three quarters, seven and a quarter, and eight and a quarter. And we just fold on those lines. And that becomes our little belly band to go around the box. Now what I like to do is I like to use a, um, a, a sticky, what do you call them, like a dot closure. So like one side is rough and the other side's flat, um, fluffy and that attaches it to, the, to each other and then you can open and shut it without ripping anything. I forget what these little things are called but I've put them in your kit so that you can make a belly band as well for your little card box. Okay so that just sits like that. Now what you can do to decorate this box is completely up to you but you do have some of these little bits left over you should have three frames and three pictures left over you could easily decorate um, this little envelope with with a few extra pieces if you wanted to um, i'm just going to quickly add a little bit of cardboard to the back of the frame just pop that on there and sit that on there and then add my little fussy cut image that I didn't use because there was 12 of those that we cut out and we only used nine so you should have a couple left over just pop that on there and then you've got an absolutely beautiful gift box that's got your card inside the glue's still drying it's a little bit wet you see that so what happens is the person will open that and then open that and then their card will be inside and then they can put it back in the box carefully and then they can use their belly band and because it's got those little foam little dot things those velcro dots that's what they're called you can just pop that back on and and they can keep their card safely in this little box. That glue is just still drying so I can position it a bit. So how cute is that? Like how sweet is that? So let's now do some more boxes. We'll do them in bulk now because we've got, I think I've got maybe three pieces of paper left. Now let's just say you don't wanna use your Florabella paper for this. 
Maybe you can find some other 12 by 12 paper in your stash that you've had for a long, long, long time and it might match the Florabella cards perfectly. You could use any 12 by 12 paper to create these boxes if you did not want to use your Florabella papers that were left over from, you could possibly turn into a layout or some more cards down the track. That's, that's completely up to you. I kind of like to use everything up and be done with that collection. So that's why I've decided to make these into boxes. But there's only enough, I think, to make four boxes. So even if you do use your Florabella papers, you're going to have to, if you want to create a box for all nine cards, you're going to have to dig through your stash anyway and find a couple of 12 by 12 coordinating papers from a different paper range. Step is to cut all of your papers to 12 by 9 inches. So that's what I'm doing here. So that, that's all done. Do all the cutting first, then do all the scoring because it's quicker this way. Take your scoring tool, score at four and a half, five and a half, ten, and eleven. Turn it around, score at one and eight. Do that on all of your pages that you're going to do. Scoring at four and a half, five and a half, ten, and eleven. Turn it around, score at one and eight. Repeat this process. Turn it around, score at one and eight. Four and a half, five and a half, ten and eleven. Turn it around, score at one and eight. Score your bands while you've got your scoreboard out. Do all your bands now. One and three quarters, two and three quarters, seven and a quarter, eight and a quarter. All right, that's all of the scoring done. Now the folding and the cutting. It might be easier to see now. It's a little bit easier to see. We make two cuts there. We make a cut here into the score line and then we cut down to meet that score line. I realize that's out of the frame. So we're going down on that score line and then in to meet it. And then here we're cutting on the score line up to the score line, on the score line, up to the score line, so that we're making that little tab there. I'll do a diagram and I'll have that as part of the kit so that you can see exactly where you need to cut because it's quite hard to see the score lines on camera. This next page is actually a little bit clearer. So you can see how I'm going to be cutting. Up there on the score line and stop at the next score line. There and there, two little snips. There and there, two little snips. Okay, and then here I'm cutting down two boxes and then on the score line across. Such a shame that that's not in the camera. There it is. There we go. Okay, let's do it again. Up two boxes. Up two boxes. Cut that bit off. Cut that bit off. And then this bit just in and in on the score lines, in and in on the score lines. One more time. 
very hard to see on this type of paper. Cutting off those corners. And then just two little snips in. Now it's time to fold. Let's just clear this out of the way a little bit. So we're folding up those bits. Basically every single crease has to be folded. Then we're starting to glue. Make our little box. The box is sort of really self. Once you cut it out and you fold it, you can sort of see how it goes. It's, it's quite simple to sort of put together. There we go, there's our little box. Pretty papers. Now I ended up going with the gray side on this one, but it's up to you whether you wanna go with the horse window or not. Last of all, I'm going to just quickly fold my belly bands for my boxes. You could use your, your boning folder to really give these folds a lovely, fresh, crisp fold. I'm in a little bit of a rush when I'm doing this because I'm trying to catch the natural light to get a photograph for this video. So I'm sort of in a bit of a rush while I'm doing this. Wrap your little belly band around and then add your little Velcro dot. There we go, isn't that pretty? So pretty, I love the papers. So when you're choosing your belly band, choose a contrasting page. So here I've got the, the very plain gray box. So I'm gonna choose a busy paper for the belly band so that there's something nice to look at. Once you have got all of your boxes done, you can decorate, you can use the frames that you have already cut out. We can add on those extra little bits that we didn't use on our cards. You've also got that lovely piece of paper, the front cover, where you can fussy cut the images from that. We haven't done those images, so feel free to add those in um, as decoration for your envelopes. I've kept my envelopes decoration very, very, very simple, but you could really go to town on the decoration of the envelope if you wanted to. I'm just trimming out the horse for one of my envelopes. So we've got this whole extra page here of, of things that we haven't actually used in our cards and these would be perfect to decorate envelopes. So I'm just going to cut out the horse but please cut out the floral clusters. They would look amazing on your envelopes. If, you, if you're doing a lot of um, envelopes, take your time and enjoy the decoration of those because this, it really is another whole blank canvas here waiting to be decorated. And that basically concludes our class for today. You've done a beautiful job in creating nine beautiful shabby chic cards and matching gift boxes. And it's just been therapeutic to sit down together and create, so thank you. If you need to purchase a kit, please hop on over to my website, www.papercraftsecrets.com.au don't delay, there's only a small amount available. So if you would like to snatch one up, please hop on over quickly to get it. Thank you so much for taking the class with me. I've had a lovely time creating these beautiful cards with you. If you like 
this video, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing to my YouTube channel. Thank you for watching and I hope you have a lovely crafty day.